Hey guys, Matt Bell here with Electric Violin Shop. We're going to be talking frets today. And you're like, frets, bro, there are no frets on a violin. Well, it turns out that there are some fretted violins, and we're going to be talking about that. So uh, this is one of two videos we're doing on frets today. This is sort of intro to frets. And if you're new to this whole concept of frets on a violin, then this is a video for you. If you're pretty experienced, you already know a little bit about frets, but you want to dig a little deeper and we'll talk about some of the more advanced techniques around frets, then maybe uh, you want to check out the second video, okay? So let's talk about frets. A lot of people, maybe you're going to hear on the message boards or whatever, they're going to be like, oh, frets are cheating, man. You know, frets, you can't, you can't use frets. Well, you can. You can use frets. You don't really answer to all those people. Um, you answer to yourself. And there are a number of reasons why we would use frets. So we're going to talk about that. Why would anybody want frets? Violin's a fretless instrument normally. Yes. Um, their frets are not going to be for everybody. It is not a universal solution. I would say actually probably single digit percentages of violinists are going to want or need an instrument with frets. Don't hear me say that frets are the solution to every problem. They're absolutely not. The solution to intonation issues is practice. Imagine that. But there are extenuating circumstances that we will get into a little bit. And then the other question, maybe a little more advanced, like maybe sophomore level frets, is how do I use frets? Well, you know, they don't just, they're not magic. Frets are not magic. So let's not, let's not get that thought into our head either. Uh, they are helpful in a number of situations. Now, what might some of those situations be? Uh, if you are a beginner, uh, a lot of people say, well, frets are for beginners. Uh, yeah, they can be for beginners. If you're sort of new to this thing and maybe you feel like you'd like to play out, you've sort of learned how to play well enough to play at, at your church or with some friends or whatever, but the intonation thing is kind of what's, you know, preventing you from being able to have some enjoyment in that, I would say go ahead and get a fretted instrument so that you can play with your friends. I would still recommend practicing and learning on a fretless instrument. But if you want to have a fretted instrument that you can use to go play somewhere and it makes you feel more confident about your playing, do it. You got my permission. You don't need the people on the message boards. Um, if you are a more experienced player and you're like, like I've been playing for 15 years, I'm kind of good at this. Why would I ever need frets? Well, in a classical situation, you don't. You can hear the instrument that's under your chin. You can make adjustments and you just play it in tune, right? What if you're on a rock stage and the drummer's hands are coming up over his head every time he's hitting those cymbals? Now, I know you think your violin's pretty loud when you're practicing at home. It's not loud compared to a drummer. And if you got a guitar player on either side of you, maybe you got a crowd screaming at you, all of a sudden that instrument that was way too loud for your neighbors, you can't hear it at all. You can't hear it at all. And you're like, well, I'll just turn my amp up or I'll use my monitor. Well, that's a great theory that works most of the time. You know when it's not gonna work? When you really need it to work. When you go to step out to take that solo, all of a sudden you're standing in front of that wedge and you can't hear it at all. The crowd can hear you because they're on the other side of the speakers and you're in a situation where your audience can hear you a lot better than you can hear you. And uh, I've heard some really good players not sound good because they found themselves in that situation. Um, frets can help you in that situation. Uh, also, if you are singing and playing at the same time, that is a lot of stuff for your brain to try to process all at once. If you're trying to intonate maybe two notes with your left hand and sing a third note, that's uh, difficult. As a guy who does that, I can tell you it's difficult. Um, and frets can be super handy in that situation. Are they, answer, are they the answer for everybody? No, but they might possibly be the answer for you. So that's sort of freshman level frets right there. Let's go to sophomore. We're progressing through college really fast right here. Frets 201, how do I use them? Well, if you are an experienced guitar player or bass player and you've played with frets before, like, yeah, I know how to do this. No, you don't. And on a guitar or a bass, you play behind the fret. On a violin, you play on top of the fret. We try to use really light pressure and you will be able to do vibrato and glissando. One of the most common questions we get, well, how am I gonna be able to play vibrato with frets? I'm gonna show you. So on a guitar, we're looking at the side, we're looking at the side of the, uh, the fingerboard or the fretboard here. 
on the top diagram you can see there's a string going across that means the nut is uh, is over on that on, on this side oops sorry this side my video is not reversed so that's going to be the nut and that's going to be the bridge so that string is angling down right and when you push your finger down behind the fret it mashes that string against the fret, and that's what stops the vibrating length of the string and allows you to play a note. Very cool, right? Now we come here like, oh my God, what's that guy been eating? Look how big his finger is. Uh, his finger didn't get any bigger, but his fretboard got a lot smaller. Guitars, violins, okay, the fretboards, the vibrating string length is much smaller, so your finger is going to be much larger in relation to the fret size and the string. Hmm. So you're going to want to play on top of that fret because that is where the vibrating length of the string stops, which allows you to play notes. That's how string instruments work, right? What if we put our finger behind the fret like we do on a guitar? Well, looky here. These frets are so low and they're usually, um, most frets are going to be 1.2 to 1.3 millimeters. They're small. Um, so if you play behind the fret, you see how that string isn't touching the fret there? Uh, yeah, so the vibrating length of the string does not stop at the fret. It stops where your finger is, and that note will be flat. So let's, uh, let's see if we can get a little bit of a demonstration here on what, uh, how to do intonation with frets. And we'll, we'll show here how you can actually play fretted violins out of tune. Let's watch here. So yeah, you want to be right on top of that fret to play in tune. Like that guy said. Wow, that's a good looking guy. Um, and really smart too. So yeah, that is, you want to play on top of the fret and play with fairly light pressure. Why? Well, one of the more common complaints we get from people as they're playing with fretted instruments is, man, I'm going through strings like crazy. Yeah, violin strings aren't really designed to be played with frets. Again, it's 90 plus percent of electric players even are playing on fretless instrument. You can see fretless instruments above me here, fretted below, right? So you're gonna play with less pressure uh, and that's gonna do a couple things. It's gonna release tension in your neck, in your shoulder, in your back, and it's gonna help you play longer and faster and better. Less pressure is gonna be good anyway, even if you're playing a fretless instrument. I probably recommend that to all of my students, fretted or fretless. Yeah, lighten up that left hand pressure. Um, if you're continually shredding a string at a given location, say it's the second fret on your A string, maybe check that fret for a burr and see, maybe there's a micro burr in that fret that you can't even see, but maybe if you take a fingernail file like across, see so if you got your fingerboard here, the frets are running this way, maybe hit your, your fret with a, a, a fingernail file just in case there's a micro burr there that happens to be eating up that string. And then maybe, the type of string that you're using is not ideal. Um, Daddario helicores with the titanium wound, um, those are going to be a little bit better for frets, okay? Now let's talk vibrato and glissando. Remember we talked about less pressure? That's where this is going to help you. So a light touch is really the trick for vibrato and glissando. I'll show you here. Yeah, I keep reaching for that C string. And it's not there. I'm used to playing a five string. So anyway, that is sort of frets 101 and 201. And uh, so thank you for hanging out. If you want to learn more about frets and dig a little deeper, check out the, uh, the next video that we're doing here, video number two.